So if I look at, if I look at, um, I go back through oh, this. Oh, no, oh, no, sorry. Wait, wait to start pressing, okay. close the door. Okay. Okay. Oh, there's the outside door. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lois Anderson was with Olga Corker now? I didn't realize that. Yeah. Me having a conversation about it, I assume you definitely liked it more than I did. Uh, how do you know? Because <laughs> I really, really didn't like it. Oh, okay. Then yes, perhaps. So yeah, so what do you think about the uh, uh, of the BNL? Um, okay. Um, generally speaking, firstly it, it reminded me that um, walking there, well, actually I biked there, mm -hmm. And then um, I'd never been in the Bozal building, so their their choice of location <clears throat> I thought was interesting. But it reminded me uh, walking through that building how um, soulless there's there's a part of what I experienced that there's a kind of soulless soullessness to it um, that I experienced and I have experienced before that was um, a bit disheartening. So I would say that there was maybe that's. I don't know whether that was a first impression, but that was certainly an impression well, I had. Well, it's the thing that they always take over. Empty, unused buildings yes. that are city property. And uh, it's, they do minimal renovations, if anything. So this one, I'm just pleased it's a new one. It's not the Ecole Berger again. Right. And thereby having it been, what you call it, um, bureaucratic office, office space. I can imagine it's completely soulless. Yeah. Although it, it, it would, it, there was something about, especially as I traveled up, like from bottom to top of the building, which is how I viewed it, um, I realized that by the time I got to the top floors, which I think must have been the old art classes, because there was windows from the ceiling or the top of the, the w building coming in, and I could see it as being sort of the painting studios. And I thought that by the time I hit the top, I felt, I had more of a sense of, oh, this is of course where the students would, would work on their easels, and so there was something about it that I thought was more, um, that remind, there was more reminiscent of what that place used to be. I actually don't mind the, the borrowing of buildings for this type of event, and if anything, that's one um, aspect of the Biennale that I appreciate. I like going and viewing art outside of traditional venues. Yeah, although there, it's, I constantly refer back to, do you remember the Songe of the Contemporain? Le? Saint Jean de no. That was back in the 80s where Claude Gosling got a start. Okay. And therefore, it was effectively a biennial, even though it was called the Saint Jean de Contemporain. It was three months long and they took over uh, the basement of the youngest <laughs> part of La Cité. Oh. And it was complete raw space, just concrete. And it was, that to me was phenomenal. I, my guess is that's where he got the idea, but it's now just mm -hmm. become the buildings themselves. It's they just plop stuff in. It's there's no. I never in the stuff that it's been at the Ecole Berger and at the Ecole des Beaux Arts. I haven't seen any real affinity with the space. Uh, any art having affinity with any of the spaces specifically. The that's interesting that you say that because the one Biennale that I, I actually really liked is when they all the Roulatec. Do you remember mm -hmm. that before the 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 now it's where the Bibliothèque Nationale yes, is on Berry. Yes, mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. The Taj Mahal. Yeah. So it, it used to be when I was a, a teenager, mm -hmm. like a tween, yeah. we used to go roller skating in this yes. thing. Mm -hmm. And so they had they had one of the biennales in there, and it was down in the basement part. And I actually really that's one of the biennales that I okay. enjoyed. There was something about that space mm -hmm. um, that I thought worked. Um, but I, I I would agree with you. The Bourget. I'd been to the. I was at the biennale two years ago, and I thought that um, you know it was it was not. Something that I, what I carried away with me wasn't, um, you know, it's not something that kind of stuck with me. Mm. And I, I did think that this building was a more interesting venue than the Bullshit. Yes. That so I thought that this year, um, you know, and the fact that they're relocating something in an old Ecole des Beaux Arts, I thought there was an interesting component to that. Mm -hmm. um, and it made me wonder what the hell they do with that building during the year. Well, it used to be the Conseil des Arts Memorials building. Okay. And then, uh, when the Grand Bibliothèque moved, uh, got built, Conseil des Arts de Montréal moved to the old Montreal Library Building, which is on Sherbrooke and Montcalm, okay. um, or Sherbrooke and Wolf, just right off of Amherst. And then that got has been empty for about now two years now, and I assume at some point they're going to move some more bureaucrats in. 
So to get back just to your initial question is what I thought about it. Um, there was, uh, I would say that as a, as a venue to look at contemporary art, I actually think that it still remains perhaps something, um, like there's something that's, uh, there's something interesting about it as opposed to just going into the regular museums and gallery spaces that we have. I thought that um, there were certain rooms, I like the idea of having certain rooms dedicated to certain artists. Um, I think that you're right, there's something about, um, the, there was, we can get into this later, but there was, I thought, a huge discrepancy between work that clearly had been made for the space versus work that had been, you know, made elsewhere and just plopped into the space. I thought none of that worked well. Um, and I didn't connect necessarily with, um, with, with those, those particular artists and what they were trying to do there. But the ones that actually were working within a specific space and had kind of gone there and you could tell that they had incorporated that in their thought process, I thought that that worked a lot better. Mm -hmm. um, yes, like the Sogi Kotan, it was Sogi Kotan who took her master's thesis and shredded it? Yeah. Okay, that one, that was interesting, but we'll get to that later. Yeah. I mean, I was, this one, because given that the theme of the Biennale was mm -hmm. chance. Right, hazard, right? Yes, yeah, a... from the, the Mallarmé poem, mm -hmm. which um, I assume I can look up at some place because I am a bloke I never read at in, in high school, which is I assume where everybody else would be everybody else read it. But um, and I was disappointed, given that it was the Bulls Art School, that they didn't somehow reference that, given the history of that building. And mm -hmm. to me, coming up with a theme that was based around, whether it's uh, Montreal schooling, uh, art schooling, whether just because that was where, uh, I was the, no, where do I did the, was it the woodworking school, but there were all sorts of other teachers and so on who came through there. That building does have a lot of history. To me, to sort of not use it mm. was disappointing. Yeah, that's true. I had that, that component I didn't necessarily see there as much. Mm -hmm. um, so you said initially, starting off, that you did not like this. Not in the least. Nothing. <laughs> um, I think I got what uh, the yeah, there are a couple of pieces in there that were okay, but nothing that really knocked my socks off, and it was more in comparison like the Kozak. The, there they. Um, Part of the thing with the bright, colorful stuff that I like. The really coding, the language. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes, and there's a certain thing where I think it might also be in reference to just having, because I started top down, oh. and uh, that's a certain thing, just maybe just because it was numbing, and I'm saying, what the, this is bad, this is bad, this is bad, therefore Kozak uh, comes out slightly better on top. And then there was um, downstairs in the basement. Mm. Yeah, mm -hmm. the mushroom guy. Yes. The exploding mm -hmm. mushroom, or uh, no, the connecting, connecting the uh, electronic to yeah, the mushrooms. Right? Yeah, uh, Jeremy Jeremy Shaw. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. You liked his work? Uh, some of it. The uh, which one? The, um, the black light room was very nice. His prints were very very nice. Uh huh. Uh, just say here, but the video saw. Okay. And those are really the two that barely stand out. Normally, one of the ways that I realize that work is good or not good is how much I can remember after a 24 hour period or a week long period and from this there is yeah I need prompts like from the book to uh, sort of remind me oh yeah I did see that oh yeah I did see that and it's just I didn't I understood that there was connections to chance and they were referencing the sort of thing but none of it was like done in any sort of my mind interesting way. It's like the video with the dice rolling. Mm -hmm. Give me a break. I can do that. That doesn't require much thought or much concentration to come up with, okay, this is how I'm going to represent chance, chance in an artistic way. The one aspect I would pick up on, though, mm -hmm. is that um, I thought, for me, these types of shows have to incorporate certain elements. One is, um, you know, bringing people out of the traditional venue, which I mentioned. Another is an interactive component, which I think was present with a lot of the work. <clears throat> and I think is important in these types, I feel, that it's an opportunity to, if you're going to attract a different type of public and kind of take them out of their traditional settings, then an interesting way of doing that is having work where you can interact with it, um, you can get involved, um, and that there's a mixing and matching. And I thought the theme-based, you know, this, this chance component, you know, there was, there was echoes like the dice, where, where it was an image that came back in different artists' work. There was this, this the mice theme. There was a theme around mice. 
Kozik used it as well. Oh, yes, with the Mickey Mouse. There was, there was a, and also there was, they made a, a shrine to a dead mouse that they found in, in C2. Mm -hmm. um, and there, so there was this other aspect, there's the interactivity, there's the creating art that actually fits in the space. There's that in, in C2 quote mm -hmm. component that, um, um, that I think is important in these types of things, or that, that can make the work stronger. And then there's the connected, connectedness between the, art, the artists. Mm -hmm. And I thought there was a bit of that going on um, in some of the echoes that they had. Um, for me, the, the certain artist standing out is less important than um, the experience.